This is an absolutely insane integral from the 2022 MIT Integration B qualifying exam. And it involves nested sines in pi by threes. And we have to evaluate the integral in the limit as n goes to infinity. Okay, this looks really cool. But how exactly are we gonna, are we going to solve it? Well, here's my solution. Basically, first up, I let n go to infinity. So instead of, uh, instead of studying the behavior of n number of nested signs and pi by threes, I'm basically now studying infinitely nested signs and pi by threes. Now I'm going to introduce some really cool notation to make our writings less cumbersome. Now, because we have signs and pi by threes infinitely nested, so I'm going to write this as sine pi by 3 sub infinity of x. And what we're going to do now is we're going to let all of this equal to y. Okay, this does seem kind of cool, but how does this help? Well, let's start off by noticing one important fact. That is, if you ignore this sine function, the first sine function and the first pi by 3, so if you ignore the first sign and the first pi by 3 and just study whatever is left behind, you still have infinitely nested signs in pi by 3s. In other words, in our notation, all of this is still sine pi by 3 sub infinity of x. In other words, this is all still y. And outside you have a sign pi by 3 operating on it. So the function you're integrating is actually sine of pi by 3 times y. Now this actually makes life a lot easier for us because we know that all of this on the left hand side of our equation is just sine of pi by 3 times y and this is equal to y. So now my problem is reduced to solving an equation in y. Now if I solve this equation this will give me some value of y that I can substitute in place of that infinitely nested, uh, infinitely nested sine function. And that means instead of integrating something uh, that's infinitely nested, I'm integrating one particular value or one particular real number. So integrating a constant is pretty easy, right? So that's our line of approach here. Now, because I'm not as smart as the guys at MIT, so solving this equation here involved a bit of luck and lots of grit. Maybe even more luck than I estimate at this point. Anyway, so I know you, but I know you may be thinking that y equals zero is a valid solution, but no, that's just not going to fit the bill in this case. Why is that so? Because if y equals zero, then this implies that sine pi by 3 sub infinity of x equals 0. And this is valid in the case where x equals 0, correct? But the problem is, the problem here is that x equals 0 is a, uh, 0 is actually the lower limit of your integration. So if you look back at your integral, we see indeed that 0 is a lower limit. So we're not exactly plugging x equals 0 anywhere. We're actually just letting x approach 0 from the right. That is approaching, uh, we're letting x approach 0 from values greater than 0. So yeah, that's why y is not equal to 0 in this case. But then what exactly is y? Well, then came a lot of thought and some trial and error. I even tried drawing a graph to get some idea of whether the graphs of um, z equals sine pi by 3 of y and z equals y to see if I can figure out without using a graphing calculator that will these graphs actually intersect at some place other than z equals 0 and uh, then I tried plugging in values. I started off with letting y equal to 1. And if y equals 1, then you have sine pi by 3 and 1. And sine pi by 3 is less than 1. So the next most obvious guess that came to my mind was not taking 0, not taking 1, taking something right in the middle, 1 by 2. And this actually surprised me. 
that if you take sine pi by 3 times 1 by 2 and you write 1 by 2 on the other side, then this is sine pi by 6, which is in fact equal to 1 by 2. And I could not believe my luck. I really could not believe my luck. And I immediately went on to Desmos and checked in. I uh, graphed y equals sine pi by 3x and y equals x. I immediately graphed them and they indeed intersected at the point 0 0.5 comma 0 0.5. So this is where they, they intersected. And honestly, I still cannot believe my luck. So the solution to your equation is y equals 1 by 2. So that means, that means all of this is just 1 by 2. So what you're doing here is you're just integrating 1 by 2 with respect to x from 0 to 3. And we all know what this will turn out to be, right? So if you have the integral from 0 to 3 of 1 by 2 with respect to x, that's equal to x by 2. And the limits are 0 and 3. So the answer is 3 by 2. So there you have it. That's a wacky integral from, from the uh, 2022 MIT Integration B qualifying round solved. And yeah, this was really cool. This was extremely cool. And I enjoyed uh, solving it. Uh, rather, I realized I enjoyed solving it right when I had the solution, which agrees with the answers released for this qualifying round, for this qualifying exam, that is. So thank you. I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. See you next time.